I never thought I'd be the one to say this on a public platform, but Harvard and NASA have just confirmed something about 3i Atlas that we can no longer ignore, and what it means for humanity is beyond anything we prepared for. Before we begin, I need you to do something. Comment your city name below, and tell me if you've noticed anything unusual in the night sky lately. NASA is quietly monitoring reports from civilians around the world, and your observation might be more important than you think. What I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. I've spent my entire life studying the cosmos. I've written equations that describe the fabric of space and time. I've theorized about parallel universes, wormholes, and the birth of galaxies. But nothing, absolutely nothing, could have prepared me for what Harvard and NASA revealed in their joint classified briefing three weeks ago. And now, for reasons I'm still trying to understand, fragments of that briefing are beginning to leak. It started with 3i Atlas. You may have heard the name in passing. Perhaps you saw a headline, scrolled past it, thought it was just another interstellar object drifting through our solar system. After all, we've seen them before. Oumuamua in 2017, Borisov in 2019, rocks from distant star systems tumbling through the void, crossing our path by cosmic coincidence. That's what we told ourselves, that's what we wanted to believe. But 3i Atlas was different from the very beginning. It was discovered in early 2025 by the Atlas Survey System, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, a network of telescopes designed to detect near-Earth objects. When the first images came in, astronomers were puzzled. The object was moving faster than it should have been, its trajectory didn't match any known orbital pattern, and its surface its surface was reflecting light in a way that defied every material analysis we threw at it. Then came the spectroscopy data. When we analyze light from distant objects, we can determine their composition, what elements they're made of, their temperature, their chemical structure. It's a routine process. We've done it thousands of times. But when the spectrographs at Harvard's Center for Astrophysics processed the light signature from 3i Atlas, the results came back flagged. Not inconclusive, not uncertain, flagged. That means the system detected something it had never seen before. Something that didn't fit into any existing database of known materials in the universe. I was brought into the loop shortly after. They needed a theoretical physicist, someone who could look beyond the data and ask the harder questions. And when I saw the readings, I felt a chill I hadn't experienced since I first learned about the heat death of the universe as a young student. The object wasn't just reflecting light, it was modulating it. Let me explain what that means. When light hits a rock, it bounces off in predictable ways. The angles, the wavelengths, the intensity, all of it follows the laws of physics we've understood for centuries. But 3i Atlas was doing something else. It was altering the light in patterns, repeating patterns, patterns that, when analyzed over weeks of observation, began to resemble a structure, not random, not chaotic, structured. At first we thought it might be a natural phenomenon, perhaps some kind of crystalline formation we'd never encountered, refracting light in unusual ways. But then the engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory ran the data through their signal analysis algorithms, tools originally designed to search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and that's when everything changed. The patterns weren't random, they were encoded. I want you to understand the weight of that word. Encoded. It means intentional. It means designed. It means that something or someone embedded information into the surface of 3i Atlas. Information that was meant to be read, meant to be discovered, and we had just found it. The room went silent when the lead engineer presented the findings. I remember looking around at the faces of my colleagues. People who had spent their entire careers searching the stars for signs of life. And now, sitting in a sterile briefing room in Pasadena, we were staring at the proof. Not a radio signal from a distant star. Not a faint techno signature in an exoplanet's atmosphere. But a physical object traveling through our solar system, carrying a message. Harvard's researchers began the decoding process immediately. It wasn't a language in the traditional sense. There were no words, no syntax, no grammar. Instead, it was mathematical. 
pure mathematical relationships expressed in ratios and geometric configurations, the kind of universal language that any sufficiently advanced civilization would understand. And that's when we realized something terrifying. This wasn't a greeting, it was a warning. The mathematics described a boundary, a region of space surrounding our solar system defined by precise coordinates and energy thresholds. At first, we couldn't understand the purpose of this boundary. Was it a natural phenomenon? Some kind of cosmic membrane we hadn't detected yet? But as the decoding continued, the meaning became horrifyingly clear. It was a quarantine zone. Humanity, according to the information embedded in 3i Atlas, exists within a designated containment area. The boundary isn't physical in the way we understand barriers. It's not a wall or a force field. It's something far more sophisticated. It's a region of space where certain types of signals cannot escape where certain technologies will not function beyond a specific threshold, where, quite simply, we have been isolated. I know how this sounds. I know the implications are almost too vast to process, but the data doesn't lie, and the mathematical precision of the encoding leaves no room for misinterpretation. Whoever sent 3i Atlas, whoever designed it to enter our solar system at this exact moment in our development, wanted us to know. They wanted us to understand that we are being watched, that we have been watched for a very long time, and that our emergence into the broader galactic community is not guaranteed. It is conditional. NASA immediately classified the findings. But Harvard, being an academic institution, pushed back. There were debates, ethical arguments about the public's right to know. And in the middle of those debates, something else happened something that made the quarantine revelation seem almost mundane by comparison. 3i Atlas changed course. Objects in space don't just change course. They follow trajectories determined by gravity, momentum, and the laws of celestial mechanics. Once an orbit is calculated, it's predictable down to the meter. But on March 14th, 3i Atlas executed a maneuver, a controlled, deliberate adjustment to its velocity and direction. It slowed down, and then, impossibly, it altered its path to achieve a stable orbit around our sun. It wasn't passing through. It was staying. The propulsion mechanism, if that's even the right word, showed no thermal signature, no chemical exhaust, no electromagnetic emissions. It simply moved, as if the object had the ability to manipulate space-time itself, bending the fabric of reality to achieve motion without conventional thrust. This is technology that we've only theorized about in the most advanced physics papers. Technology that would require an understanding of the universe so profound it makes our entire scientific revolution look like a child's first attempt at counting. And it was here, in our solar system, watching us. The psychological impact on the research teams has been significant. I've seen colleagues, brilliant minds, people who have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of knowledge, break down in tears, not from fear exactly, but from the weight of realization. The realization that everything we thought we knew about our place in the universe was wrong. That we are not the explorers we imagined ourselves to be. We are the observed, the contained, the quarantined. But why? That's the question that haunts me every night. Why would an advanced civilization isolate us? What about humanity warranted this level of intervention? The decoded message offers clues, though they're deeply unsettling. The mathematics references evolutionary thresholds, specific stages in the development of intelligent species. It describes a pattern that appears universal, a developmental arc that all technological civilizations follow. And within that arc, there are critical junctures, moments where a species either transcends to a higher state of consciousness and cooperation, or it self-destructs. Humanity, according to the message, is approaching one of those junctures. The quarantine isn't meant to keep us trapped forever. It's meant to contain the potential damage we could cause, both to ourselves and to the broader galactic ecosystem. If we expand outward before we're ready, 
Think about it. We are a species that has only recently developed the ability to split the atom, to manipulate our own genetic code, to create artificial intelligence that rivals our own cognitive abilities. And yet, we still wage wars. We still destroy our own planet's ecosystems. We still struggle with basic concepts of empathy and cooperation on a global scale. Would you, if you were an advanced civilization monitoring thousands of emerging species across the galaxy, allow such a species to venture out into the cosmos? Would you risk them carrying their violence, their short-sightedness, their capacity for destruction to other worlds? The quarantine is an act of cosmic pragmatism, perhaps even an act of mercy. But here's what keeps me awake. The message also indicates that the quarantine is being monitored in real time. That means whoever built 3i Atlas, whoever encoded that warning and sent it across the light years to reach us, is watching our progress. They're measuring our advancement, not just our technology, but our consciousness, our ability to evolve beyond our primitive impulses. And there's a threshold encoded in the message, a specific set of criteria that, if met, would result in the quarantine being lifted. We would be welcomed into the galactic community, given access to knowledge, technology, and cooperation beyond our wildest imagination. Or if we fail to meet those criteria, the quarantine could become permanent. NASA is taking this seriously, more seriously than anything I've witnessed in my 50 years in science. There are teams working around the clock, analyzing every piece of data from 3i Atlas, trying to understand the full scope of the message. Harvard has assembled a coalition of physicists, linguists, anthropologists, and consciousness researchers to explore what it would mean for humanity to pass the test, so to speak. And there are quiet conversations happening at the highest levels of government about what this means for our future. But the public doesn't know, not yet. And maybe that's for the best. Can you imagine the societal upheaval if people truly understood that we're living inside a cosmic containment zone, that our wars, our politics, our daily struggles are being observed by intelligences so advanced they can manipulate the very laws of physics? Yet the leaks are happening. Information is getting out. And I believe that's intentional. I believe that someone within the research teams wants the world to know because keeping this secret might be the worst thing we could do. If humanity is being tested on our ability to transcend our limitations, then transparency, honesty, and collective awareness might be exactly what we need. The most profound part of the message, the part that still gives me chills, is the final sequence of mathematical relationships. It describes consciousness not as an emergent property of biological complexity, but as a fundamental force of the universe. Like gravity, like electromagnetism, consciousness is woven into the fabric of reality itself. And the evolution of intelligence, according to this message, is the universe's way of becoming aware of itself. We are not separate from the cosmos. We are the cosmos, awakening. And the question being asked of humanity is this, will we awaken in wisdom or in chaos? 3i Atlas remains in orbit. Every major telescope on Earth is tracking it. And just three days ago, something new happened. The object began emitting a low-frequency signal, barely detectable, but unmistakably artificial. The signal repeats every 11 hours and 17 minutes. We don't yet know what it means, but the timing is precise. Too precise to be coincidental. Some researchers believe it's a countdown. Others think it's a beacon calling to something else out there in the dark. And a few, myself included, wonder if it's an invitation, a test to see if we'll respond, if we'll reach out and attempt communication with whatever intelligence lies behind this message. Because here's the truth that we're all grappling with. First contact isn't coming. It's already here. It arrived the moment 3i Atlas entered our solar system. And everything we do from this point forward is being observed, analyzed, and judged by minds we cannot yet comprehend. I think about my grandchildren. I think about the world they'll inherit. And I wonder if they'll grow up in a humanity that transcended its limitations, that learned to cooperate, to protect its home, to value consciousness and wisdom above power and conquest. 
or will they grow up in a species that remained quarantined, isolated in its corner of the galaxy, forever watching the stars and wondering what could have been? The choice, it seems, is ours, but the clock is ticking. As I sit here tonight looking up at the sky from my home in New York, I can see the faint glimmer of stars through the light pollution. And I know that somewhere up there, 3 I Atlas is orbiting our sun, carrying its message, transmitting its signal, a cosmic reminder that we are not alone, that we never were, and that the universe is far stranger, far more interconnected, and far more purposeful than we ever imagined. I don't have all the answers. No one does. But I know this. We are living through the most important moment in human history. The moment when we discover that our existence has meaning beyond our planet, beyond our species, beyond our individual lives. We are part of something vast and ancient and beautiful. And we have a choice to make about what kind of participants will be in that cosmic story. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. Because what happens next will determine not just the future of humanity, but our place in the grand tapestry of conscious beings stretching across the stars. The question I leave you with tonight is this. If you knew that an advanced intelligence was measuring humanity's worthiness to join the galactic community, what would you change about the way you live your life? What would you change about how we treat each other, our planet, and the future we're building? Think about that. And then ask yourself, are we ready? Or do we need the quarantine after all?